easy to beat a mess. It's so easy. It's so easy. It's so easy. Yeah. It's so easy. It's so easy every game. It's so easy. It's so easy. They're never going to win again. So let's fight the Marlins. You know, the Mets realistically should be winners against the Marlins. The Marlins! <laughs> Oh, it's like the Phillies the Nationals are going to do this. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? The Nationals are literally drawing up batting practices and really screwed. They're actually high fiving them. Well, we haven't had one of these outbursts in a while, given the. This is fucking bullshit! And I ain't got enough to fix this team! No! <laughs> Frank, we lost you. Another episode, of course, of Allowing Me to Be Frank. Uh, it's kind of all gone off the rails, kind of how the Mets season's gone off the rails. And Frank is not doing well right now, as you all can hear. Fucking goddamn motherfucker. God! <laughs> Frank, what are you beating with that bat? Yes. What did you just beat with that bat? Yes. Oh my god. It's safe to say you haven't been this frustrated about the Mets in a long time. Look at this. Look at these people singing. You know they're singing? Hey, they're singing. We got the win. We got the win. We got the easier win. Why was Trevor Williams sent to the minors? I get Jeff Harley. They're still around. Jeff Harley's nickname is Buzz Lightyear. This is the LA. There's infinity and beyond. <laughs> oh, boy. I mean. I could go wrong. This situation just shows you. They're not going to be side bias. Pinko Rock Truck's going to be. It's going to be the two big superstars. And five are going to be Pinko Rock Truck and Jared Kulelnik. And the best pitcher in the game is going to be Kuma Rocker. Who's going to beat the Mets every time he pitches against them? He's going to seven no hitters. He's going to be a brave. And the Braves are going to be a better than the Mets in the game. I don't win. It's still fucking world one. <laughs> That pretty much sums up the recent stretch that the Mets have had. I think in a nutshell, Frank. They're not even showing any fucking fight. And then you have... And then we have I'm proud that he played today. 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 I'm not worried. 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 Does it make it any worse for you that the Mets seriously kind of sold this changed culture and everything? Nothing's changed. Nothing has fucking changed. <laughs> what has changed? What? What have you seen that has changed? I guess other than the ability now that they have an owner who can spend money, but... Well, is he? He didn't. He be. He balked at that fucking Kumar Rocker money. Well, with that, that wasn't about the money. It was about the medicals. And Scott Boris didn't let him get the pre-draft MRI. So the Mets were seeing his elbow for the first time. Well, then how did they, they, they don't fucking draft him? Yeah, I mean, when it came down to it, it wasn't even the money. They just felt that the number 11 ne pick next year was more valuable than Rocker and what his medicals And the number 11 pick for the New York Mets? It's Ricky Stenhauser. Yay! Look at this. They might have given the 11th pick to Ricky Stenhauser, who is got a who is got a cleft foot and will never play, but it's just to do it so his name is mentioned. Congratulations on that. No future. Do you hear Brett Batty is batting like uh, his like one for 90 in uh, Double A? He hit a monster home run tonight, though. Everyone's a bust. Everyone's a bust. And Jared Kanellik, he has five home runs this week. <laughs> and the Mariners are better than the Mets this year. Do you see any future in this team? And they're not going to spend any time. Do you know Jacob DeGrom is going to get Tommy John surgery? So he's gone, and everyone with the Mets, when they get Tommy John surgery, they're gone for two years. Yeah, I mean, at this point, 
they needed to do make some dramatic moves at the deadline. And yeah, they got Javier Baez, but they didn't really do much else. And especially in the pitching department. Oh yeah, Baez has been fantastic so far. Hey, he's, he's gonna be with the spot man. I mean, like, uh, like this to Michael Confort Cano for. <laughs> and as bad as Conforto's been, he actually hit some balls hard. Half game, the half game lead is down to a half a game. They're gonna get swept in Philadelphia. And watch this. Here's one falling in. There's Brandon Neville. <laughs> Frank, what's going on? I'm I'm delayed. I'm behind you. Nimmo actually did make the catch. What? Are there any base runners or? Oh, he actually finally made the catch. Okay, so I'm not too far behind you. Yeah, with Miguel Castro pitching, obviously, uh, you know, no lead's kind of ever safe with him. But there is no lead. The Mets never lead. No, and tonight, of course, they needed those early scoring. They got three early runs, and then they gave it right back. Their bats have gone to sleep ever since. But had it not been for the error and for Baez's sweet swim move at the plate, avoiding the tag, it would be 3-1. Yeah. They, 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 they have no clutch on this team. You realize if the, the Reds, I, I don't know why they put in Sean Doolittle. Sean Doolittle, Sean Doolittle is, is a, oh, God. And now Angel Hernandez is doing the Angel squeeze. Angel Hernandez has made some terrible calls tonight, right on brand. Well, strike two, ball one was a strike. Strike two was a ball. So I guess we're in the right spot. Meanwhile, Cole Hamill signed with the, uh, the Dodgers, not like the Mets needed him. No, yeah. I mean, at this point now, the Mets have Rich Hill going tomorrow, who's only really going to give you five innings. They have nobody that could go any innings. And and Edwin Diaz is on on the uh, paternity leave for probably the next three games, including the first game in Philly. So it was a good idea. Good idea to use uh, good idea to use Seth Lugo two innings yesterday. Yeah, and Seth Lugo gave up another run last night. He's really that's another problem is is he hasn't looked the same since coming back from the elbow surgery. But Frank, what are and you? All right, they're out of the inning. They're out of the inning. What happened though? Uh, Phillies never lose now. And the Nationals are just laying, laying well, down. Well, the Nationals, the Nationals took the field too. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we? Do you know the Nationals have blown six three-run leads to the Phillies in the last two weeks? Yeah. No, I see. Yeah. Gonna run one time, yeah, yeah. Gonna be with a hang on. Uh, yeah, they were actually partying last night together. Why can't we? And why we? And they said they gave their promise that they'll play their hearts out when they play the match. Kyle Schwarber's gonna be back. And also look at the. <laughs> they traded Schwarber to the Red Sox, but. Also, looking at uh, how the Yankees just easily swept the Marlins in Miami, and then the Marlins play their best baseball against the Mets. Every time. No problem. Yeah, this is really this is the make-or-break stretch of the, of the season right now, and uh, it doesn't get any easier. The Mets have to play the Dodgers and Giants for 13 straight games. One and 12. One and 12. They're going to lose 90 games. They're not even going to come close to 500. They're going to finish anywhere from 76 and 86 to 72 and 90. Frank, have you noticed that since you finally were at peace when they were 10 games over 500 at 35 and 25? I know! <laughs> well, I know that! That is a goddamn motherfucking day that Donnie Stevenson came on! <laughs> you, the Fleming curse has been put on the Mets. And they have Buster only treating out the smiley face. Uh, two, 2007. Two, 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 two,
<laughs> yeah, I mean, since you were at peace that day at 10 games over 500, the Mets have gone 20 and 26. And now it's 2027. If they lose tonight, it will be. They will lose tonight. They will lose tonight. And the one and a half game lead, barring what happens tonight, is the slimmest margin they've had since May 26th. And then they, they have an SMP record with that file. Yeah, when I was playing, 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 I hit a grand slam home run to end a game when I was playing, when I was playing, when I was playing, when I I I I was playing, when I was playing, I did this, I did that. You hit 199! You suck! You suck! You suck! Did he did he respond to your tweet or anything last night? You were firing them off at him. Not that I know of. You really dragged him through the mud last night. You ever listen to him? All he ever does is say what he did in his career. Yeah, but he really did not have a very good offensive career at all. He was awful! And here's his Anthony Bass. The Mets, the, 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 this guy might as well be fucking Mariano Rivera. Bass and Bender, they've like been on. And Bender, you remember how much he sucked when he was with the Mets? When was he with the Mets? I don't even remember him. Oh, I could have sworn he was with the Mets. All right, well. I is this went opposite field, so at least they'll have a one run lead, but with no with no bullpen tonight, they're probably gonna blow it. There we go. Javi Baez just hits his second home run as a Met. It's twenty fourth of the year, opposite field blast and gives the Mets the lead in the top of the eighth. I am sure Anthony Bender played for the Mets at one point. So I remember cursing that name. Probably. But I mean that I, I could sworn he played for the Mets. Okay, that he did not play for the Mets. He's a rookie. He Was there a Bender that played for the Mets? No, I don't believe so. Who am I thinking of? Is that because sworn Anthony Bender was a Met? I don't think so, but at the same time, I mean, Bender and Bass have just killed them. The, the, the Marlins, the Marlins, look at the, the Marlins are... Six and two against the Mets after today's win. Six and two. The two wins were because of a dropped fly ball and a dropped elbow. I think that, um, what's his name? I'm pretty sure Trevor May will be closing tonight since Lugo pitched the two innings yesterday. Uh, you know, I honestly think that the idea that, that, that we are now seeing the weaknesses of of uh, of uh, Rojas. Well, it's not even just Rojas, Frank. The pitching staff carried the Mets through the first half, and they have almost a six ERA since the All Star break. Well, no one's been worse than Taiwan or Eikhoff. Baez apparently was jawing with the Marlins dugout. On yeah, his way. I saw. I have to say, he definitely brings the, gives the Mets an attitude. And hopefully well, they got it. They, they, they gave up Pete Crow Armstrong for him. I don't care. It, just in case Pete Crow Armstrong turns out to be a star, they have to resign him. Otherwise, it's a disaster. A yeah. disaster. I have a feeling that they wouldn't have traded for Baez unless they saw well, you know, the ability to sign him long term. Because that money's not going to Conforto at this point. I wouldn't even give him the qualifying offer. Because I'd be uh, too fucking afraid that they'd actually uh, fucking, uh, he'd actually fucking agree to it. I think after the rocker thing fiasco fell through and everything else, I'd stay as far away as, from Scott Boris as possible at this point. They really should not draft any players that he, he has. They, they could have drafted, they could have drafted anybody. I, I mean, Scott Boris has a, has a, has a, has an absolute fucking grudge against the Mets. 
in a way, he kind of screwed his client too because now Rock he always to, does. He, he doesn't has give a fuck. Remember a couple years ago, Dallas Caden, da, 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 Dallas Keiko, Craig Krimbrell. Remember uh, yeah. the, the, how hard it was that, that, that they didn't uh, that they missed like April and May. Yeah, and there's a and Conforto piece. Got back on track this year. Conforto's on base as a much needed insurance run with the opposite field single there. He swung the bat better in this series. He's just been very unlucky. As opposed to before this series, he was just looked lost at the plate. By the way, did you hear J.D. Davis now is also dealing with uh, his hand is flaring up on him again? Oh, what a fucking piece of shit is it? What is how how does how does it, who is the fucking medical director of this team? Does anyone even actually fucking care? Is anyone actually going to do anything about it? Is 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 is, is, is Steve Cohen going to be more than fucking tweeting and tweeting and talking? How do you feel about Steve Cohen's tweet or his tweets the last few days about having to get our acts together? I, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I'm not impressed. What did you reply to him? Well, you're the real owner. You could do something. <laughs> Rojas held a team a team meeting today, too, before the game. And then you have these people uh, tweeting me. I don't feel confident that they're going to win. You know, it, 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 the Mets, the, 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 this is not right. What the Mets are doing is does not right. What we, it, the, way, the way I feel is not right. This should not be how it, how it goes. I don't feel joy when they win. I feel relief. Other than the second half of 2015, the Mets really haven't had a team that's kind of dominated. They've, had, uh, they've only had three winning seasons, and one of them was – was Shikazi in 2019 since 2008. Yeah. No, it hasn't been pretty. It's uh, even in the good years that they're struggling. Like the 2016 wildcard season, they were under 500 in mid July, in the end of July. And Terry Collins had that famous rant. And then they kind of went on a run when they got the ass man and, and Cespedes back and they added Jose Reyes. But did, did this team is lifeless night after night. Night after night. Uh, I, I mean, I'm I'm tired of watching this. I'm just going through the fucking motions. Do you see the benefit though of like what ha- I'm sure they do? What happens when you score early in the game and aren't in these deficits? It actually keeps you in the game later and and gives you further opportunities to take the lead and win. Uh, I mean, do you be eyes if it wasn't for the Reds stupidly putting in Sean Doolittle? Yeah, I mean, when they have when you have Amir Garrett, I don't understand how he's not your closer all the time. Amir Garrett had a uh, almost had a brawl with uh, Javi Baez a couple of days ago. I know on the Cubs when he was with the Cubs still. So I think they didn't want to put him in for that reason. Yeah, Baez, Baez, I, 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 truthfully, I don't know. The Mets, the Mets own Sean Doolittle. With how bad, yeah, Doolittle's career numbers against the Mets are, and I'm sure the Reds are aware of it, it was just kind of an odd move to put him in there. You know, if that didn't happen, they would probably right now be uh, staring loss, seven straight loss in their face. Well, yeah, I mean, they've lost five or six coming into tonight. So if there's ever a time where they needed a win and they needed more than, you know, a string of wins, it, it's right now. They really have not played a, 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 a good, crisp game. In two weeks now. I mean, things were looking good when they took the series in Cincinnati and then they took the series against the Blue Jays. And then ever since they've, they've lost, uh, they've lost seven of 10. Uh, I mean, the, 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 uh, the games, look at this, look at this. These swings that they take are just the absolute worst. They're terrible. And Tomas Nito, he's gone just uh, both Nito and uh, McCann just uh, can't do anything right now. Last night, another case of being unlucky. Uh, Conforto got robbed of a base hit. That would have put the the tying runs both on base, and then McCann had that RBI double. That potentially- and, and the Nationals just 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 continue to, to, to they, they're not even giving it an effort. No, I mean they gutted their whole roster, and they really are playing like that. So, Frank, I think now might be a good time for our first ad read, uh, talking about our favorite hot dogs. All right, you know. America's first and original hot dog company was Feldman's. Charles Feldman invented the hot dog. 
Feltman's is a veteran-owned business, which was revived in 2015 by two Brooklyn brothers, Joe Quinn, a former Army captain, and his brother Michael, and they did it in honor of their late brother Jimmy, who was killed in the September 11th attacks at the World Trade Center. With a team of military veterans that has collectively served over 110 months of combat, Feltman's is now one of the largest growing natural food companies in the United States. They're 100% all beef, all natural Hot dogs are available. Purchase online at wholefoods.com. And you know what else they have now? Bacon! They now have Feldman's bacon. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm waiting. I'm going to get the package any day now. I'm going to get some bacon. I'm going to try that Feldman's super thick cut bacon. And I know it's going to be good because it's got Feldman's name on it. And you know, they are the perfect addition to your next family cookout, the Feldman's Franks. And your your family's breakfast to Feltman's bacon. I'm allow me to be frank. Is proud to be presented to you by Feltman's. That's right. And now you can try the bacon wrapped dogs, Feltman hot dogs, and Feltman bacon. And you could also go with the bacon cheeseburger too. Now with that Feltman's bacon. So uh, I'm definitely ex- as excited as you to try it, Frank. Yeah. Speaking of bacon, Jason J D Davis is up now and. The Mets' inability to tack on continues. Is Davis, uh, what's the count right now? Because I'm a little behind you. Two and two. Two and two, okay. J.D. Davis, he he has picked up two hits in this series so far. He had an RBI double the other night. Um, But he's obviously, that hand's been bothering him, as I mentioned before. Uh, uh, Can someone explain to me what is going on with this team? Is everyone made out of glass? The doctors apparently told Davis that his hand's about 90 to 95% healed, and it's going to flare up on him from time to time. So and, and is Jacob DeGromding, are, are the Mets just in denial? That's the bigger concern, is DeGrom's getting another MRI around August 13th, and that's truly going to determine whether he can come back this season or not. Uh, right now, he's confident that he'll be able to pitch again this year, but really they don't know at this point. Uh, I mean, what is, the, who is, what is going – how is this happening? Frank, do you think that they didn't go all in at the deadline because they didn't think DeGrom was coming back this year? I don't know. I don't know. What we do know, though, is it's pretty clear that the Mets aren't really going anywhere without DeGrom. Maybe not even the postseason. They're going to they're going to finish below 500 again. Again. They're going to finish below 500 again. So do you think the Phillies uh, wind up in first place at the end of Sunday? Yes. You do? You don't think the Mets will will pull out a series win in Philly? No. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of just been a rough go lately, I have to say. Uh, it's pretty obvious this is their worst stretch of the year, but it's kind of dated back really since mid-June that they've been on this downturn. As D- J.D. Davis continues to kind of fight through this at bat, of course, in a full count. Um, Frank, do you want to talk a little bit about your trip to Chicago? I know we talked while you were in the midst of the trip last week, but you had a lot of stuff going on afterwards, and now you're back. So how, Yeah, how- I got a lot of uh, starting lineup figures. I went to uh, Wrigley Field. I went to uh, 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 Gansey Rate Field. Uh, I went uh, on the way, way back. I hit the uh, We hit the Hall of Fame in Canton. What was that experience like? Uh, we didn't get enough time to really uh, experience as much as we should have. We got there about 5.30, and they closed at 8. And this guy kept coming out. Yo, we're clo- every five minutes. We're closing in 45 minutes. Uh, just to remind you, we're closing in 40 minutes. Just to remind you, we're closing in 35 minutes. <laughs> just to remind you, they're closing in 30 minutes. You know, we got. Uh, you don't have to see all the bust here. We got some uh, the ring gallery. You can see all the the Super Bowl rings. Oh my God! And then uh, you saw you saw it. We, we we might be able to. You can't show any movies anymore. Uh, uh we did, we're closing in twenty minutes. <laughs> so did that you make? You plan to go to the gift store? You might. I want to get down now. We're closing in ten minutes. So you, were you just rushed by this guy the entire time you were there? 
Yes. That's unbelievable. What kind of gear did you pick up there while you're at the Hall of Fame? Uh, I didn't get any at the Hall of Fame. I just went to the Hall of Fame. I, uh, they, they were closing in five minutes. Yeah, of course. Of course they were. So you got no gifts from the gift shop then? No. What was your favorite thing about the Hall of Fame? Uh, there's a nice, uh, there's a nice uh, little area display about the 72 Dolphins. Didn't you come back with a banner or a pennant or something? Oh, yeah. I got that at the, uh, the collector show. At the collector show. What else did you get there? A bunch of starting lineup figures. Who, what, what were the figures? And, uh, well, I got two of them right here. I got one of them right here. Jacob DeGrom. Oh, wow. Frank, you're I got putting one the like this curse on Anzo. I hope you know you're putting the Fleming curse off back on DeGrom. I got this, uh, Joe Nemeth in his, uh, uh, Notre Dame uniform. Oh, wow. Uh, I got Nolan Ryan. This is one of my favorite items I got. Here's Bob Feller. Oh, that's awesome. Babe Ruth pitching with the Red Sox. Oh, wow. <laughs> no Dan Marino? There we go. Of course, I knew you couldn't get out of there without Dan Marino getting Dan Marino starting lineup figures. Uh, I got pretty much almost all the Dan Marino starting lineup figures already. Where are those gonna go, Frank? I don't know yet. I got no. I got no room as it is. What kind of value do, the, do those things have uh, unopened? They might have a little more value. Uh, I mean, I, I the most I paid for these was like twenty dollars. And there's Hank Aaron. I already got Dave Bruce open. I had that open for years. Uh, here's Raleigh Fingers. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's uh, Ty Cobb. See the way he holds the bat? He actually did hold a bat like that. And he batted 367 on his career. That's amazing. Uh, he never had one feeble at bat. <laughs> there you go. And here's Cy Young. Of course, these days, everyone looks like Cy Young when they face the Mets. Right. They say you really cleaned up. I mean, this is just, yeah, this is, I was bringing home bags of this stuff here. Yeah, I saw Doug was handing you the, um, Doug was handing you all your bags and everything. It was a ton of stuff. You came, I, you I got a Pete Alonso just like this. I got a uh, 1969 Mets. Car, we get shit like that. You the car right here. Yeah, this is the car. Oh no, this is the car. This is just my holder. Everyone can hear that in the background. It's because Frank came back with a thousand different items from the collector show. And you want to see the rest of it? Let's let me see. Hold on. Yeah, let's do it. As Frank's getting up right now, the Mets are up four to three, and Nimmo's in a two-two count. First and third, two outs. Mets are in desperate need of adding on on the insurance run with six outs left to go to secure a victory and end their three-game skid. And we've lost sight of Frank right now as he's going. Wild to pitch, run scores. Run scores on a wild pitch. There's your insurance run for the Mets. And did I hear a little bit of joy from you, Frank? That was more joy than when Bias hit the home run. Got a nice Devils uh, championship uh, pennant. Got this nice 1973 Dolphins World Champions pennant. I saw that. And that's then I went on eBay and brought the 72 variation. Oh, that's great. I got this. Gorman Thomas uh, sold at a Brewers game that was given away at a Brewers game. Gorman Thomas uh, bobblehead, and Gorman Thomas uh, of the Seattle Pilots. And the Pilots had the most unique uniforms in the history of baseball. They had scrambled eggs on the bill of their hat. Oh, that's, a, that's awesome. I mean, get, I, they have a Seattle Pilots bobblehead. I mean, uh, I, mean I, had, I had to get it. 
And look, it's only twenty dollars. Uh, here's a Duke Snyder starting lineup. Here's the Pete Alonzo. That's amazing. This will be a treat for whoever's watching on YouTube tomorrow. Um, Frank literally showcasing. By all the way, the, uh, here's Chicago. Brett Hall, about uh, Brett Hall and Bobby Hall. And someone took me to the back and uh, I got to meet Bobby Hall and talk to him for about 10 minutes. And uh, Bob, because it was like uh, he's a fan of uh, a fan of mine. And really? uh, and he invited me in the back to talk about to talk. Uh, to show me the back uh, over there was uh, Andrew Jones, Andrew Jones signing autographs and Steve Garvey, uh, Chris Chelios and his agent like walked by me rudely. And eventually, uh, Chris Chelios' agent wanted me out, so my time back there uh, ended, but it was nice uh, while I was back there. And I talked to uh, Bobby Hall about some war stories uh, when he was playing hockey, and uh, he said that uh, he was at the old Madison Square Garden, and someone announced, uh, and here to sing the national anthem, and they mentioned this, uh, this woman's name, and then he heard one voice go, she sucks! And the <laughs> announcer said, Nonetheless, here she is with the national anthem. Oh my god. How <laughs> surreal was that for you? What? How surreal was the going in the back and everything? Oh, it was nice. And uh I, I mean Bobby Hall is a legend. You know, if you add his WHA goals to his NHL goals and he took a million dollars a year to go to the WHA in a time when nobody was making a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. That's and he, and uh, he played with the WHA. He scored 303 goals in the WHA, 610 in the NHL. And if you add those together, he would have uh, 913 career goals. And where's here's that? My, here's my civil rights uh, barrier breakers starting lineup collection. Jackie Robinson and Hank Aaron? No. Larry Doby. Larry Doby and Jackie Robinson. Yeah, the, the, you know, Larry Doby, the first black player in the uh, American League oh, from that's New right. Jersey. People uh, forget about Doby. Yeah, I'm definitely one of those people. So you would say you would go back to the collector show then next year? Yep, uh, it's going to be easier to go next year. Why is that? It's going to be in Atlantic City. Oh, Atlantic City, wow. It rotates. Here's a uh, Nolan Ryan uh, starting lineup. Then I got, and these were the loose ones were like uh, four for ten dollars. Oh wow, that's a great Jason deal. Jason Kidd, Derek Coleman, uh, Jim Abbott. Look at his glove with the stub. Yep, stub glove with the stub, the no hitter, of course, with with the stub. Gary Sheffield. I think. Uh, now, this one's kind of busted, and I got it for free, so I had to try to fix it. But it's uh, Satchel Page. I'll have to see if I can fix this somehow. But he gave this one to, for, to me for free, because I said, uh, I looked at it, I said, this, this one's got like a, it, it's kind of busted. His arms are falling off. Yeah, here it is. Well, I fixed it for now. How many Satchel party Page. lineup figures did you get exactly? I got a lot. <laughs> That's an understatement. Kenny Anderson. Hideo Nomo. Uh, A-Rod. Uh, Jesse Owens. Here's Damon Stoudemire in a Toronto Huskies throwback uniform. I got this one just to step on it. <laughs> Is that can say? Can say yes. Hold up. Yeah, Frank's enemy. Now you, you own him, both mentally and physically now. Yes, I do. <laughs> Here's uh, Brett Saberhagen. The classic dino uniforms of uh, Damon Stoudemire. Isringhausen. Uh, Griffey. Uh, oh, here's one. Jim Dorp. Wow. No more Garcia Power with the Trenton Dunder. How the hell did you get that? They, they were in. It was in the box. That was like uh, the, the four for ten dollars. When was he playing for the Trenton Thunder? Uh, 
It's Trenton Dunder Arbor, 40 Bikini Yankees affiliate, where the uh, Red Sox affiliated for two years. It was on a rehab assignment, probably? Um, no, it was before he actually came to the majors. Before he came to the majors. That's really, really crazy fact that I'm sure most people didn't know, including myself. John O'Reilly. Yeah, the Red Sox, the, uh, the Trenton Dunder were like a, the Red Sox affiliate from like uh, 94 to 97. But yeah, these are the loose ones I brought. The guy even gave me a uh, something for free too. He gave me this Warren Spawn thing. Then I got this uh, New York Mets uh, 1969 uh, Ford Mustang. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, of course, I had to get this since uh, since he's now with the Mets. To symbolically buy him. The hobby Baez bobblehead. So how pissed off were the Cubs fans who you interacted oh, with? Oh, it was like a funeral. And in the ninth inning, the guy who runs the the, uh, the sound system at Wrigley Field decided to play separate ways by Journey. Oh, my God. That probably brought a lot of tears to the crowd. There are fans that look out there, out there that look like they're crying. Please don't go. Because I walked around the stadium after the game. And there were like uh, the fans just gathered on the uh, a whole bunch of fans gathered on the uh, where the Cubs buses were to take them to uh, the airport. And there were like can't news. The the, the news was there. Uh, the press was there. I mean, they're, they're, it was like they're gonna they're, like film all the Cubs leaving the the. Stadium. Frank, I think you muted yourself. For everyone listening, I don't know if it's me muted or Frank muted, but he, he uh, I can no longer hear him. Frank, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> Frank's screaming in the background right now. Hopefully everyone can hear him and not me. Yeah, I can hear you. I think you muted yourself. Can't hear you. No. Can you hear me now? Yeah. What are you doing over there? Watching Pete Alonzo uh, fly out softly. Did he fly out? Yep. What a mess. No. Every, every run, every run the Mets score feels like they're stirring cement. That was good contact, though, Frank. But, yeah, unfortunately unlucky on the Mets end. Well, I guess I'm going to have to go to the uh, – I guess I'm going to have to go to the uh, the game on the 13th now. That's against the Dodgers, is it not? Yep. Is that the Friday game? Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be there actually covering it from the press box. Did you see what you're giving away? Um, no, I didn't actually. Uh, they're giving away a Pete Alonso bobblehead super, uh, as a, uh, like a uh, superhero bobblehead. Well, I'll get that because we actually get all the giveaways. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I, like, I got a McNeil bobblehead. I got the Lindor black jersey with the New Balance logo on it on Friday, which is pretty cool. So that 25,000 fans thing is, a, is pretty, much, uh, pretty much bullshit, isn't it? The jig is up, I guess. They put 25,000 up there. To protect themselves. Just so when they run out of the bobbleheads that are put by the door, no one can complain. I've always thought that. I always thought it was like they, they had more, but they put 25000 by the doors just so nobody can complain. I think that uh, what it comes down to also is like it's kind of like a get to get people to come out to the ballpark too. Yeah. It's an incentive. Yeah, get there early. Well, this was the first 20,000 fans, and I got it at uh, Sox Park. Oh, wow. So you're collecting bobbleheads for every, every team. What did you think about the White Sox Stadium? It's a nice state. It's, it's, it's an okay stadium. It really is. It's, it, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'd say it's better than Yankee Stadium. The atmosphere is good. Most the exploding it. scoreboard. The exploding scoreboard is something else. Don't mind me rustling. 
Now, this is a funny story. Go on. This, it was like, it was closing time on Sunday. And uh, I was uh, rifling through a box that said uh, $1 each. And uh, I wanted to get a, uh, New, Jersey, a New Jersey Nets uh, patch. And they had some nice things in here. And the guy says, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the whole box for 40 I said, nah, I don't know about that. And then he went, uh, 30 So in this box, I got like classic rambling pins. Uh, yeah, Kansas City Kings. I mean, it's just like a, uh, it's like a smorgasbord, a smorgasbord of uh, cacophony of just like, uh, just like, uh, well, pretty much trash. But you know what? So what they say is, uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure. That's very true. I got this. Uh, San Diego Clippers patch. That's fantastic. And tons and tons of buttons. Tons of buttons. Ridiculous buttons. Like, uh, and, and like Super Bowl 15 button. Oh Indiana National Champions button. I'm going to give away these away half this these, half these stuff. Who played in Super Bowl 15? Raiders, Oakland Raiders. And uh, I got a whole bunch of USFL buttons like this in there. Oh, shit, we've got to do the other ad read. Yeah, I think I was just going to say I didn't want to interrupt you with your uh, your stuff revealing. Well, uh, this is the perfect time, I guess, for, for our final ad read of the show. You know what you know you know could be revealing? You know what could be revealing is too much hair down there. You know, across the galaxy, all the way from Australia to Houston, Everyone has pubic problems. And if you do, Manscaped will have it all clear for you with their fourth generation, their brand new lawnmower 4.0. Kick your pubes to the next planet with the performance package 4.0. I mean, the, the orbit in your pants will feel like zero gravity when you use this. I mean, you're going to join 2 million men worldwide who use Manscaped and get Get rocket ready for takeoff. Go into manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code TANK. You know, the first schedule lift off of the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. The spaceship is here to guide you on a journey to a new, new trimmer body, your body, your balls, your butt, and even your anus. <laughs> can't forget about your anus. No, you can't. Get 20% off for free shipping with the code TANK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with uh, free shipping with uh, promo code TANK at uh, manscaped.com. For a clean trinity and beyond, your space balls will thank you. You know, I remember when I was growing up, I'd watch this, like, astronomer show, and it wasn't uh, the famous one with Paul Sagan. This one was more about... Uh, the possibility of aliens. Yes, when I was nine, I was into that too. You wore a tinfoil hat. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I, of course. <laughs> Wasn't everybody? So anyway, this guy would talk about all the planets in the solar system, and he always said Uranus, Uranus. So, so what do you think it was called? That after that? No, I always knew it was Uranus. He just didn't want to say Uranus. Oh, my God. How hard did you used to laugh as a kid when you'd hear the word Uranus? I didn't laugh. I wasn't, I wasn't, that, uh, wasn't that ridiculous. <laughs> it's just the name of a planet. That the, uh, someone just had a, uh, a crazy sense of humor about. Ah, here's the, the one. Here's the two patches that really caught my attention. New Jersey Nets and the Baltimore Bullets. Those are awesome. You got to hold on to those. I know you're going to give away some of those, but you yeah. should definitely hold on to those too. Look, look at this. We got the uh, a whole bunch of little USFL buttons like this. Final four buttons. I mean, it, uh, Providence uh, is in the final four. 
you see any, out of the eighth, so you see any one need to go jerseys or retro shirts or anything you wanted to take home or took home i didn't really look at the at that you know they, they rarely have my size great looking play by the way by javier baez to get drew smith through a one two three eight it's crazy okay. that drew smith's pitching in a, in a game like this but it's kind of shows where the mets bullpen's at and also he's had a he's had a really good year like i said they got to they got to get themselves back on track but yeah i'll see if i find anything interesting oh here's something do I get, um, let me see. Here's something for you. Oh, wow. That's awesome. If you're giving any of the, if you're giving that away, uh, I might know a guy. <laughs> well, I got to get over to the Hoboken one these days. Have you helped me do a raw dog Hoboken? Yeah. Do you have your, uh, do you want to do the hot dog card or is there a hot dog place around here that you have your eyes on? Uh, I don't know. Is there a hot dog card down there that's good? Yeah. There's one right near the water uh, along the Hudson. That's, that's pretty good. I wanted to find it. I want to see if I can find one by where baseball was, uh, the first baseball game was played. Yeah, that's not far off on the water either. It's kind of kind of close by. But yeah, I love this stuff. And, and uh, meeting, uh, uh, I think uh, meeting uh, uh, Bobby Hall might have been one of the highlights of the trip. I mean, just sitting there, I, did, I didn't get any autographs. And boy, the autographs, I tell you, uh, our, our, our producer, the cameraman who went with us, Aria, he tried to get some autographs, and it was a total shit show. Why? Just the lines were crazy? Lines were crazy, and it was just poorly organized. How about the fact that Bobby Hole is a fan of yours? Well, his security guard is a fan of mine. But Bobby Hole but, but Bobby Holt talked to me for like 10 minutes. It was ridiculous. That's crazy still. Honestly, surreal experience. Mike Piazza was there, but I didn't see him, and I wasn't going to go on a long-ass line. Yeah, I'm sure. There's probably a lot of people lining up to see him. But on that note, uh, I think maybe we could roll into Ask the Tank. Now might yes, be we can. With, uh, I mean, I, I, uh, I showed you the dolphin pennant, right? Yeah, the dolphin pennant was cool, and I saw that um, before the show, actually, because I saw it in Doug's video of handing you all your laundry. Well, it was all this stuff I have. Take a look at this. This is from 1966, the Dolphins' first season. Wow. You just, like, cut those out? Can you cut those out? Or you I'm them? not cutting them out, obviously. <laughs> it's a great find. I like the, uh, I like the uh, Chief one. Yeah, the Chiefs. You think you could no. get away with that logo today? No, no way. And this is the Dolphins' first season. They had this. This was their very first season. There's no Bengals on here. And it's a nice AFL, a nice AFL find, if I do say so myself. Yeah, I would have to agree with you, Frank. Um, all and right. It's so still, and it still has like this sticker from the AFL. That was on here. Uh, like right here. Let's see it. Yeah, that's cool. The AFL logo is awesome. Ha, huh, the Hall of Fame. I got to go back to the Hall of Fame soon. Hopefully next year. Yeah, not have someone rushing you out every five minutes. And, and, I, and, I, and I think I think Doug's head was hurting. Because every time I got into a display, oh, I, and I was telling about different players and different things. And then he played a video and he said the same thing I just said. <laughs> They should just record you <laughs> doing the narratives at the Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, I told him about the, they had like a, something there, like one of the sneaker, one of the shoes from the sneaker game. I mean, they, the Hall of Fame is terrific. Yeah. All Hall of Fames are. Well, all, well, I assume they are. I mean, I want to see all four, now I've seen two or four. Cooperstown and Canton. But yeah, the guy, and the guy's trying to draw me away from the bust. And they had, and what's funny is you get to 2020 and 2021, the only busts that are out there are the people who are dead. That's interesting. No, there, well, there's any reason. The induction ceremonies are this week. So the people who are alive, their busts haven't been revealed yet, and they'll be revealed 
at the, the 2020 induction ceremony Saturday and the 2021 is Sunday. Oh, yeah, that's right. And we got preseason football coming back right around the corner. Tomorrow. Yep. I always loved the, 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 the halls. The, you, the, you can argue that each of the, that both of them are two of the top ten players of all time. Yeah, and you have the chance to meet one of them. But, Frank, on that note, let's uh, roll into Ask the Tank this week. Uh, Francis Satriali wants to know, if Bumgarner's seven-inning no-hitter went to extra innings and he continued his no-hitter through the ninth, the ninth inning, would it have been considered an official no-hitter by MLB? Yes, it would have, which makes why they're not, not counting it absurd. Wow. There you go. Um, Ian Grimm wants to know, what are your two favorite sports movies? Two favorite sports movies. Uh, Miracle. Uh, let me see. What would be the other? Will be another one. Uh, Miracle. Hmm. Maybe Eight Men Out. Okay, that's one that people don't really think of. I feel like. Well, it's it's. It, that you should watch Eight Men Out before you watch uh, Field of Dreams. Why is that? Eight Men Out. Lindor is actually wearing the jersey from the giveaway. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I don't know why my mic is acting. Or something. Sure, or something. Well, it wouldn't be an allow me to be frank episode without technical difficulties, Frank. You know that. I mean, do I have to get new wires? I mean, what's wrong with my mic? I mean, it didn't work last week, and now there's I, I've gone through two wires, and both of them have shorts. I don't know. That's so weird. But moving on, we we have a good question here from SMM Muscle Sport LLC. It says with all the injuries the Mets have suffered this this season, Frank, it seems to be conditioning related. Do you think Steve Cohen should have the team go on monitored off-season programs? Yes. What do you think the players union would say about that? Well, it should be loosely monitored so they can get away with it. But I, I, I think it's a good idea if every team did this. I, I, and um, I would say that uh, anything after Christmas, the, the – uh, the team should know what's going on. Yeah, that's just they're they're given programs, I believe, but they're they're a bit basically on their own. I guess that is implemented by the um, by and, the and I think the player association might like it because it might actually help players. I mean, these players are making millions of dollars, and 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 the goal of the uh, the the program is not to intrude on their lives, but to make sure that their health is maintained. Yeah. No, you're right about that. I mean, why, why would the Players Association be against that? Fair enough. Um, Feeble Mets fan wants to know, should Edwin Diaz name his child Feeble? Now, why is this no? Should Edwin Diaz name his child Feeble? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Come on, Frank. That man has a family. And speaking of Feeble, actually, Michael Conforto has – Two hits and has been on base three times. Now. He just had a nice double off the wall in center field, second and third, and one out right now in the ninth. So that's a very good sign. Well, you know how I feel about him. <laughs> Michael Cano for. Our final question of the night, Frank, comes from the side retired pod, and they want to know with Jerry Kuzman's number being retired next month, who should be the next number to get retired for the Mets? 17 and 8. Keith Hernandez and Gary Carter. Yes. That's not, not a bad idea. They also asked about uh, David Wright and Daryl Strawberry. What do you think about that? Yes, down the line. Fair enough. They should do it every year. They should do uh, do like uh, one or two every year. 
until they should have caught up. Now, yeah. if they want to be true to Joan Payson, they should retire uh, Willie Mays' number. Which basically hasn't been worn besides Robbie Cano and Ricky Henderson. And uh, for about three games, Kelvin Torve. Yeah, that's right. You know but, that story, right? Um, Not entirely, no. Uh, it was like 1990 or 89, 91. That late, it was either 89, 90 or 91. Uh huh. And Calvin Torvey came up from the minors. You know, someone gets hurt, they call him up, a, a guy from the minors, career minor leaguer. And uh, he asked for number 24, and they gave it to him. And no one thought about it. He went out there, and he was like um, six for his first 10. And then finally it dawned on him, oh, no, no, we can't, he can't be wearing uh, Willie Mays' number. So they told him he had to change his number to 39, and basically he went one for his next 20 and was never heard from or seen again. Classic. That's kind of the way it goes. But on that note, the Mets have a 5-3 to three lead. They're headed to, well, they have one out of way, but they, they'll be, if they don't tack on more runs here, they'll be headed Yeah, to, well, do they ever tack on runs? I think you know the answer to that, but Trevor May will be on to get the save. It'll be, either be two runs or possibly additional runs on top of the two-run lead. But on that note, uh, Frank, I know you're hoping that the Mets end their skid tonight. Uh, they need to, of course, with a critical stretch coming up and their division lead slipping away. Thanks to everybody for listening again this week. Remember to follow Frank at NJTank99 on Twitter and Instagram. Follow the podcast at Frank the Tank Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Myself at Regazzo Report on Twitter and Instagram. And our producer, Nick Buono at Nick D Media on Twitter and Instagram as well. Remember to rate, download, review, and subscribe. And thanks to everyone for listening. Frank, take us out with a little music if you have any. Feebly, <laughs> feebly. Every time the Mets come to bat with runs and base, they don't do anything. It's feebly, feebly. If you don't click like and subscribe, you're an idiot. Feebly, feebly. Yeah, don't be feeble. Click like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Allow me to be frank. Till next week.